Hi everyone. Welcome to the Empty Nester Show, where we're always planting seeds of hope. I'm E, the Empty Nester, and today we're going to talk about starting slips for Malachi in Okinawa and a Japanese sweet potato. Also, a normal sweet potato that is called Garnet Yam. And I've saved these from, if you look through my videos, at the end of this link I'll put a playlist for the harvesting and growing of the Malachi and the Okinawa last year. And there'll be also another video where I showed the difference between growing sweet potatoes in water, sand, and soil. And the results were soil was the best choice to um, grow them in. My sweet potatoes lasted um, all summer long, producing slip after slip after slip. And I went ahead and just let the frost kill them, otherwise I could have brought them back in the house and reused them again this year. And the Malachi in Okinawa, though, I ordered from Baker's Creek, so this is the first year I've saved two birds from this one, these two varieties. And um, if you'd like, I'll show you where I stored them at in the house. In this room, I just keep them on the shelf, exposed to daylight, and looks like these potato. These are normal potatoes, and these are the um, Okinawa and Malachi. This long one's the Malachi. This one is the Okinawa. And it looks like sprouts are starting on the Okinawa. seem to be doing well too. This guy is growing. The Malachi is really a quick starter where the Okinawa has a longer tendency to not sprout and the tiny roots don't work as well at storage where the bigger ones they kind of are starting to lose a little weight right there. I think these would have been better off taken off the vine and um, stored up there. Look at that vine. I wonder if I can just plant that and... Yeah, I can. Look, it's growing. The potatoes kept this vine alive. This one... There it is. This vine's still alive. So I can plant these as perennial vines. Back here in the laundry room, let me turn the light on. This one here um, has been growing since September, October, when I put it back here. Maybe a month later, it started growing. In this room on the north side of the house, the other side was... Um, Southwest. These guys seem to have stored perfectly here. This is the Japanese sweet potato and the um, Okinawa. The little guys are having issues, but this looks to be, you know, a good size for storage. Okay, let's get started today. Um, this is the one that was in the laundry room and um, I would normally just get a container like this, you know, something that came from the grocery store. This is a lid for a cake and fill it up with soil, potting soil. I use a pro mix that's got peat moss and vermiculite and um, I mix in a couple handfuls of happy frog potting soil which has a lot of nutrients so it's got bad guano worm castings and a number of other things and i'm really happy with both of those products and all i would do is like this let me grab some soil over here this is the pro mix there's some cocoa core mixed in here also There was about three scoops and then one, two from the Happy Frog potting mix. 
and then mix it all around. And it's that easy. Just set the potato in it. Let me bring you a little closer here. I'm going to move these guys out of the way. This is the Japanese. It's supposed to taste like water chestnuts from what I've read. I um, didn't taste it. And then this is the Okinawa. No, yeah, Okinawa. We're going to put these both in the same thing. If you look at it, this right here was for the plant. It was pulled off the vine. The root from the sweet potato plant comes down and then swells and forms this tuber. This is the end of it. So it seems like the um, slopes are plant starts are coming from the side that was underground as the end of the plant. So I'm going to put it in like that. And it's the same way with this large one here. The top of it has that. And with the garnet, it was just sitting there getting um, sprouts on its own on the shelf in the kitchen. But it looks like this was a the end of it, the point, and this was where it came in from the parent, yet the sprouts are starting down here. So I thought that was really curious. You can get sprouts from either end, but the potato preferably likes starting from that end. So I'm just going to get these in and add a little more soil around them. Since it hasn't started making roots yet, I'm going to put it down like that. And if I wanted to, I could just leave it in water and let it continue to sprout, but myself, it's a lot easier and better results from what I tested last year, putting them in soil. I'm going to put some more soil on the end of this guy here. These are just um, storage containers like you would put your shoes on. I'm prop this guy up, cover that end up with soil, and bring more soil in around it. no time. As long as he heats the key ingredient for sweet potatoes, they like really hot temperatures. And the hotter that these guys stay, the faster they grow. So in the next month or so, we'll have plenty of slips. And in order to start the slip, let me get some water. I'm loving the greenhouse. I've got a couple areas here where I let the water come in up here and then pour into this bucket right here and I can collect my own fresh water from rainwater. Okay, on the um, plant that's coming out from the sweet potato, you want to leave about a quarter or a half inch of sprout stem on here. And you actually should get a knife and cut it off. And then I'm going to cut, pull off the bottom two leaves. And I've got Milo here. <laughs> Let's see. That would leave that one in the ground. I mean, out of the water. So I'm going to go ahead and pull two more leaves off. One thing about the sweet potatoes, too, the leaves are edible along with the sweet potatoes. Let me grab the scissors. Okay, to take the slips off here, 
all you want to do is leave a little bit of a nub here left on it. I'll turn this around and you can see a little closer. See the nodule here? You want to cut right above that and below that one and peel off the leaves and put it in water. Which <laughs> this one I should have waited till I got a little bigger, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the soil right here and see if it takes off. That one's not happy at the top, so I'm just gonna cut that off and put that in. Trim that one off. And it's kind of tiny, so I'll wait till that grows more. This one, I'm going to go between the first and second nodule and cut that one off. And put this one in the soil. And water it. And that's it. It's really easy to make slips like this. So I'll get these in a really warm place and in a couple days you'll start seeing roots. As far as uh, choice and preference, the uh, um, Okinawa here is my choice of I'd like to grow the most of it. Where the Malachi, I don't really want to grow that many of them anymore because um, they are just like um, a really flower you know, like a bud flower tasting sweet potato. And even though they're good, um, my family is programmed to sugar and sweet potatoes, adding sugar to sweet potatoes so they won't make themselves just eat the potato, the vegetable itself. So um, I don't want to add something or keep something in the house that requires a sweetener to go into it where this um, I can cook it just like a regular potato on the Okinawa sweet potatoes and nobody asks for sugar so that's the best choice if you're diabetic and um, I'm hoping that this one here the Japanese one will be a good choice also but I'll close for now and thanks for watching